Hello, everybody. Hello, it's Michelle Lloyd here, founder of United Art Space, and I am joined. Hello, we've got Melanie here as well. Hello. <laughs> so I'm just going to pop you on mute, Melanie, for one second, um, just while I introduce everybody. So we have a special live session today. It's usually me by myself rambling, but we're going to have a conversation about being eco. And I am joined with Karis, Melanie and Renelle. And we'll chat about how to be more environmentally friendly, how to be more eco. And we'd love you all to contribute to this conversation as well, because we're all learning. I definitely am in terms of this topic. So we thought it'd be lovely just to open this up. So welcome, Karis, Ronell and Melanie. I'm just going to unmute you all. So hello. 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 <laughs> um, so let's just start just chatting. Renell, should we, should we start with you? Sure. Um, so let's talk about, so your artwork is heavily influenced, isn't it, by environment and being eco. And so I thought we could all talk about how we can be more environmentally conscious. Mm. But shall we talk, first of all, how this, this topic influences your art? Sure, sure. So um, my work is focused on environmental impacts on the habitat of uh, wildlife and specifically Native Australian wildlife is um, my focus currently. Um, and so every tiny part of their habitat is impacted by human um, intervention, basically. So the more we can try to minimize our impact on these animals the better they have it so um, I live out in the sticks I live in the country um, I'm not on town water I, I don't have um, anything that's connected to um, the city so you know sewerage that sort of thing it's all all done on my country property um, and so I really feel quite connected to the animals on my property. So I have wallabies and echidnas and koalas and lots and lots of different birds. And um, because I, you know, walk out of my studio and there's there's an animal, you know, 100 yards away, um, yeah, I can, I can really see how my impact of how I live and how I produce my art um, can impact on them quite easily. Mm -hmm. I can see living in cities how people get quite disconnected from wildlife because you don't see it as often you you can you know you may see a pigeon or you might see um mm. those very um overpopulated animals but you don't see um a lot of the ones that are really struggling so that's what my work is about and why i choose to kind of try to be as eco-friendly as possible in my practice Brilliant. And so do you have any tips for anybody who wants to become more env environmentally conscious? Because I think sometimes um, we just don't know where to start as people sometimes. Yeah. And I know some people here have probably yeah. taken some steps already. But even yeah. if you do take those small steps, it has a massive impact, yeah. doesn't it? On It does. And it can world. be something. <laughs> we'll something yeah, it small. can be something really tiny. And it can be really something huge. But, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of things that you can do between those two parts. So something as simple as collecting rainwater to be your, you know, your watercolor water. Um, oh, wow. That That's kind of too. thing can be so simple. And it's it's just trying to be more um, less impactful, I suppose, is the, the, the main thing. Um, thinking about where your chemicals or where things are going so if you're cleaning your brushes you know I, I paint in oil and I draw in watercolor uh, watercolor pencil so the oil paint obviously is something that is going to have an impact so I try to really think about having rags that I keep um, all of my dried paint stays in a little jar and that jar stays with me and I just compact it down so I have like this solid block of color that just sits there and I keep on adding more to it um, I don't use any chemicals like thinners or terps or anything like that I, I use soap to clean my brushes and I just do it more often so it's it's just thinking about how you can do small things to mm. make an impact on every day 
um, making sure that your materials, where do they come from? I know that, um, you know, people are often trying to find the cheapest material, but just think about the, the longer term impact of that. So, mm. you know, are, is your wooden board, is it sustainable wood? Um, have you recycled those canvases that, you know, didn't quite work out, you know? Have you gone to a, a you know, a thrift shop and seen if you could buy a couple of old canvases from there? Um, old frames are fantastic as well if you can if you can grab a couple of those. So trying to reuse other materials or, or you know, getting things from those sort of places can really help you, especially when you're just trying a new thing or you're playing or you're starting a new type of medium. And those those items are perhaps more, you know, throw away. Um, just try to be less, you know, disposable I suppose mm, yeah um I love the rainwater idea I've never thought of doing that before of collecting the rainwater but um, Nikki's got a question here I don't know if you'll know the answer to this Ronell uh, mm. but I love the rainwater idea does it have any effect on the paint or the longevity I wondered about using seawater too as I often paint on the beach brilliant um, um well but Rainwater doesn't have any chemicals in it. So a lot a lot of council water or water that's supplied by the city often has chloride or has some kind of filtering agent that takes out anything. Um, rainwater is straight from the sky. So um, yeah. it's going to have, um, it's a lot softer. It's not a, it, it doesn't have the chemicals in it. So it probably will, um, you know, in my tanks I have, um, filters that filter it before I drink it um, yeah. and that's just because you know we have frogs living in our tanks and <laughs> all yeah. sorts of things like that so you know <laughs> that's just from a health perspective but you know you can collect it straight from the sky and it's actually much softer as a um, on your brushes as well it, it isn't as um doesn't eat your brushes away so mm. yeah I, I I use that all the time so it's good for your plants too mm -hmm. Fantastic. So there was a question here. Uh, Simone was asking, how is the bird population? Fantastic. Do you we have so many birds. <laughs> yeah, we have whip birds and lyre birds, all sorts of birds. And we have um, some magpies that just uh, we've raised from little chicks and they run around in the backyard and always come back. Uh, just let everybody know where you're tuning in from, Ronelle, because I, I think... Um, so, so I'm from but... Queensland in Australia, so that's where the crocodile hunter's from. Um, so it's the I, I'm from the bottom bit, but it's the pointy bit on the right hand side. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got all it's sorts living in your garden with you. We do. We have lots of animals living here, which is great because you know whenever you need to have some inspiration, you just look outside and there's something out there. Yeah, going back to that comment about the seawater, Nikki, um, I bet it would have quite a nice effect, actually, with the with the salt inside. It depends on what medium you're using, of course, but um, de yeah. it's definitely one to test, isn't it? Um, the only thing says, that you... you might need to look at is the, the salt itself would probably um, lace the edges. So if you get salt and you put water in it, the salt will move away from the water. So mm. you might get a white line around the edge. Mm -hmm. But yeah, which might I don't be quite nice. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Linda says, I don't use water soluble oils. I really like them and don't have the problem of fumes or discarding chemicals. Oh, okay, great. Um, let me just see. Someone says here, hello. Hi, Ronelle. Um, oh, okay. Shepperton. <laughs> yeah, Marissa's um, from, she's not from Everton, but she's from Victoria. Fantastic. So let me just see if there's anything else. So Simone says, yeah, I use vintage fabric. People give it to me now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you start to hoard and collect things, people you become known, don't you? <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh Thomasina's asking if we could talk about packaging. So yeah, we'll, we'll have a conversation about packaging. Mm -hmm. Um let's just move. I'll come back to that in one second because David says here, delete your old unread emails because it takes power to store things on the web. Wow. You wouldn't think of that. <laughs> uh, let me just go back. Okay, there aren't any other questions. I just want to make sure that I'm caught up. So Edward's with us. Hello, Edward. 
I've used acrylics most of my painting life. Always been a bit concerned about the paint covered rags going into my bin bag, which I keep in my studio, ending up in landfill. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if and does any, are, any of you use acrylic? I know you're an oil painter, aren't I'm you? I use gouache. My lemma as well. <laughs> yeah, Melanie. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, because it, it is, um, yeah, it dries as a real tough plastic, doesn't it? If yeah. anyone's got any tips I, here, it's something that I, we can um, have heard before people have painting tins, you know, the ones that you paint the house with, mm. and they fill them with rags and then they take them to the disposable paint place where you take your okay. paint to um, yeah. and they dispose of it environmentally that way. So okay, they just true. fill the, the paint tins with them. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Um, let me just see. If you get a white salt deposit line, it might absorb water from the atmosphere. Yes, that's talking about the, the sea salt mm. of using that. Um, yeah, definitely. It's worth experimenting, isn't it, and playing around. And I think this is the thing with playing with different ways of working. It's just it is trial and error and, and as much mm. as we all share, I guess. So what we want to try and do is collate a lot of information and create a booklet of some sort in the future to share with people so if we can all keep sharing together then we can put something together and share it out because if you've tried something like the sea soul and we can spread the word of how it works it'd be amazing to share all this knowledge that we have together um okay so i'm going to come back to you in a oh yeah packaging Ronell, um do you post your work or does the gallery do that because you you, you sell most of your work. Uh, I have gallery. a bit of both. Um, so I have a very ugly corner of my workshop where I have uh, a pile of boxes of people who've sent me things over time. And um, I always recycle all of my packaging. Um, and I have like a little stamp. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. But it's a little stamp that says, oh, can you see it? No, probably not. It says um, intentionally no, recycle this intentionally oh. recycled packaging mm -hmm. and oh, okay. i think there was someone somebody on here who had that idea and i was like i am stealing that that's a great idea and i've had <laughs> people actually comment on the box when it's arrived that you know it's it, it may look a bit tattered and it might have other bits of sticky tape all over it but it has this little stamp on it that says that it's recycled and they're like oh you know oh i'm helping so you know that's by so me good. making sure that i do the right thing it's telling other people it's okay to do that. So, yeah, because yeah, I think that's one of the biggest fears around, a re you know, sending like a, a crisp box or you know something that yeah. you've you've yeah. had in the post is that yeah. professional. I keep I keep um, bubble wrap that people send to me because obviously you know trying to send something in the mail you've got to keep it protected. So. I don't buy bubble wrap. I tend to use what I've already got. Um, yeah. I use paper expansion um, wrap that, that wrap that around things. And I do, if I have to buy bubble wrap, I always buy um, the stuff that can be, that's made from plant matter so it can go straight back into the garden. So, but I, I haven't had to really buy any at all. So, yeah. That's and as far as packaging um, uh, products, um, I try to find either boxes like a cardboard box that can go on them or I use paper, uh, paper like brown paper and string or um, uh, cellophane is the other one that I'll use if I have to have it so that people can see the outside. And what's the paper expansion product? Could it's, you explain more what like that is? A, yeah, it's, it's like... Um, craft paper, like a brown paper that has a hexagon pattern cut into oh, it. Oh, yeah. And so yes, when you yeah. pull it, it kind of just becomes mm. spongy. And yeah. that is almost like bubble wrap if you put enough around it. Yeah, that's much better to use, isn't it? Mm. Okay, awesome. Right, okay. Karis, let's come to you. Um, so uh, could you just explain a little bit about your work, Karis, and how... Yeah, how this whole eco thing feeds into what you're doing as well. Yeah, so I'm um, I'm a paper collage artist, and I suppose the core of, of what I do is about kind of reusing and recycling and repurposing. 
And so I won't, I won't ever print anything deliberately. It has to be found. And so whether it comes from magazines, um, sometimes I work on prints, kind of vintage prints that have come from charity shops or, you know, local sort of, you know, thrift, thrift shop type places. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's very much about the found imagery and, and, you know, items and things like fabrics as well. I mean, I, I, like last week I was... Um, I was in Dungeness and I found all this lace had been like washed up on the on the beach. And it's like, right, I'm having that. So it's all these things that kind of, you know, I can acquire. And if I can get them for free, it's brilliant. But I will, I say, we'll go to charity shops as well. Um, mm -hmm. Bits of broken jewellery. So I like I like things that have been discarded, I guess, really. And so that's what I, I base all of my work around. Um, when we talk about paint, I use tester pots as well. So I've been, you know, I've been kind of renovating the house. So all the tester pots that I had um, when I was, you know, testing out my, my wall colours and things. I've been using yeah. those now in my artwork. I don't use, um, I purposely stopped using acrylic paint, which I did use in the past. So at least then I can reuse yeah. what I've got already, um, which I really yeah. love. Actually, I really love the colours from the, from the decorating paint. I've got really inspired <laughs> by <laughs> They look great on, on the wall as well, you know, because, you know yeah. really lovely, subtle colours. And like yeah. you say, once they once those pots are, are finished, then you can take them to the recycling center and dispose of them that way. Yeah, brilliant. And so, so you're collaging, and then are you? So I see some frames in the background, and so oh, yeah. what, do you? Do you frame your stuff, and you get all of that as well from? I do some of it. I kind of get if I can use so so I do use vintage frames. If I can, if it, if it comes, with, if it's a print I'm working on top of, like with this one, then the, the you know it's got the frame, and then that becomes part of it because I like that aspect of it. So I can, yeah. I will do that as much as yeah. I can. Sometimes I, I I do you know I I, I do frame work if it, if if, I, if I'm able to, to you know find the appropriate frame. But certainly it's yeah. it's about being mindful, isn't it? Really and thinking constantly is like okay what could I do what you know how can I you know be a bit more conscious about this um yeah and, you know what can I reuse what can I repurpose um, yeah you know so we'll kind of feel like it's always questioning that really and the yeah. same with the packaging you're saying about that I mean I do use the biodegradable bags when I'm posting out because mm. um, I put it onto products as well so that's um, I make sure that's all biodegradable and all, re all reuse, like you're saying, with the, with the boxes. I love the idea of a stamp. I hadn't thought that because you, you're right. You do get really, you know, you feel like, oh, I need to look professional. I don't want to send it in a tattoo mm. bit of cardboard. But that's, you know, I think that's great to put that stamp on. And I think, you know, I can see why people would, you know, they'd really appreciate that. It's a great idea. Yeah, I think so. And like you say, it's normalising it, isn't it? Because it's, yeah. it's almost like people are afraid to do it. So the more we just do it, the more yeah. people just become accustomed to that's how we'll send things in the future. Yeah. We don't have to get a new one. There's loads of boxes around. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> um, fantastic. Melanie, let me just come to you. Hello, Melanie. Welcome. Um, oh, so so uh, what kind of art do you make? Just, just share, because I know you said you were using acrylic, so you've got this dilemma about, yeah, disposing of of the rags so, and things um, like that. I'm uh, studying ancient Egyptian funeral um, caskets, um, yeah. masks and such like, and the designs oh. on them. Oh. So I've also been looking into how they uh, create these objects have been around thousands of years. So I've been looking into how they've been creating um, these pieces that have lasted so long. Yes. So it's, it's called cartonnage um and it's like paper mache but with fabric so mm. linen was the the um, papyrus were the materials that they used they glued together and they it because it was flexible they were able to mold it and then cover it with plaster and then paint so i've been uh, recycling material. So I had an old pair of linen trousers. So I, I started off with, um, so first of all, I have a friend who's in a building business. And so if he gets scraps of wood, um, he'll give them to me and, and make up little frames for me. Oh, so I, So these haven't really cost me anything apart from the glue and the nails put together. So, so I would prep this first, and 
um, and then seal it. Mm. And it, I know it's nice and chunky, um, so it, it's not something that I'm going to put on the wall. It's something that I'm going to have freestanding on a shelf, something like that. Um, so mm. it won't need a frame around it because yeah. it'll be like a, a sculptural uh, mm. painted object. Um, but to get a nice surface, so this is what I've made from an, um, an old pair of my linen trousers, which I cut up. <laughs> so this has become a nice, um, this one was actually just a wooden frame. Yeah. And then I covered it with, um, I prepped it first and then covered it with linen, glued the linen down and then sealed it. And so it's a nice solid uh, painted surface. Admittedly, you know, it's the time you spend on it. Mm. Um, uh, this one's now all prepped and I'm finishing off. Uh, this is going to be painted up and then it's going to go on a, um, a plinth mm -hmm. uh, for an exhibition in January. So I've got a, a group of these I'm working on. Yeah. So um, it, it takes your time. Yeah. So you have to factor your time into creating these when you're yeah. yourself. Mm -hmm. um, but to me, I am a, a, I do look in skips and stuff like yeah. that. Looking yeah. for the, ooh, what, what they got there or, you know, somebody's been building or oh, a bit of wood's left there. Oh, I'll have that. Um, and it saves I, it all from landfill as well. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, builders themselves, they they waste so much. It's like, and my, I grew up in a a house where the, the garage was full of stuff. And during my summer holidays, um, I was a latchkey kid. My parents were working. So uh, me and my brothers and sisters would make ourselves busy making things that we found in the in the shed or garage so yeah. i guess that's where where it comes from yeah. so uh, um, not only do if you haven't got wooden blocks what i've been doing and, and here's a piece i've done it's just gluing layers of fabric together makes it yeah. wow is that just it fabric a painted glued. Surface. yeah and that will be a uh, float mounted uh within yeah. a frame so you know, it. You have once you've painted it, you have to kind of make sure it's flat. So, like flowers, you would press it between anything heavy. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a nice, good, solid surface. And and this mm -hmm. was a bit of scrap uh, material, so it didn't really That's... cost me anything and didn't yeah. take long to prepare. But yeah. uh, it turned out to be. I was just experimenting, thinking. Oh, Let's stick these together like I would paper mache. And uh, it turned out pretty good. I was quite impressed. That's fantastic. So what, what, how many layers are in that and what type of fabrics do you remember? This was, this was a bit of old actual uh, canvas from days gone by that I kept it from college and never used. So this is only two layers mm. of fabric. Mm. Um, this linen um this was two layers because it's a hollow center but the solid one was just just one light layer and because you're gluing it you don't need to stretch it mm -hmm. just just smooth it down um and just make sure you've got enough um glue so you've got nothing lifting underneath and it, it's it's quite solid and you know and then gesso it and it's good to go that's such a good idea because there are <clears throat> so many clothes you know the clothes that you just don't you can't send to charity because they've got holes in and they're just you know <laughs> so that's, that's perfect for that yeah that you don't want to be thrown away and you know too good to be no, used as a yeah they're, they're too bad to go uh you know they're, they're, they're cracking the trousers <laughs> okay then this looks good I, and I've always been thinking about, well, I've probably got some old cotton um, sheets in the in mm. the um, in the cupboard as well. Um, also, 
because my my husband used to work at ikea so he'd bring just stuff home yeah and um what i'm trying to do is use natural fabrics Mm -hmm. for sustainability because um synthetic fabrics will deteriorate so using things like cotton and linen will uh have a longevity to them so Mm -hmm. i've i've got so um uh, you know, like you got you 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 cover your your um, furniture with. I've got some denim fabric that I'm going to use. I thought, and actually, I think I'll keep the blue of the denim as a background. So it's a nice, very large piece I'm going to be using in the future. So yeah, I'm I'm gathering a bit of a pile. <laughs> <laughs> This is brilliant. <laughs> um, so I was asking you, let me just put this question on. Wait, which glue do you use, Christian? Um, PVA, because it, it's, because it seals it, that, uh, especially on the wood, that you're not getting oils come through um, into the fabric um, that you're using. And then um, glue down the, fa- I'll seal it first, and then I'll glue down the fabric separately so that I've got a total, total seal. It's crazy. And then you're left with that, yes, hard surface to work it's got on. Nice, it's got a nice grip to it as well. Yeah. You know, if you want want a smoother surface, obviously um, you'll put several layers. I've only found I needed um, uh, one layer of gesso, a nice, good, ample layer of gesso. But if you wanted it a smoother surface, uh, go for a second and then mm. maybe sand it down a bit if you wanted uh, that. T- I mean, you can paint just on the wood itself, um, but you have to put prep the wood. And yeah. the nice thing about that, by covering it in fabric, you know, you cover up the seams <laughs> of the wood mm. If yeah. you don't want them showing, if you don't want that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, do you always cover up the wood with fabric? Is that how you like to work? I'm doing with this particular uh, collection that I'm doing. Mm. Um, mm. So, not necessarily. Um, if I show you something, yeah. Um, this is a, a little painting my uh, grandfather did of pyramids. Oh. And the date on it is 1921. And that's just a little bit of card he had. Wow. Um, but it's lasted all these yeah. years, something yeah. that I cherish. That's lovely. So, I mean, if you, if you prep it well, it will last. I mean, that's 100 mm. years old. And yeah. it's a <laughs> It's a bit, you know, a bit like a backing board you would get on a, a picture frame, that mm. sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Amazing. The people used um, to paint on cigarette boxes. They painted on all sorts of bits and pieces from, you know, wherever. And it was it was the done thing to be able to just reuse everything. I think mm. nowadays people have just got an abundance and that I think is the problem is that you want something new you want the best you you know and and sometimes working out the challenge of these particular materials actually brings something to your work as well so Mm -hmm. I'm sure that if you didn't have to work around the materials that you have Karis your work would be completely different Mm. and with you Melanie you know if you didn't you know, if you weren't ferreting away all of these little bits of fabric and thinking about how you can work with them, you know, it may not um, inform your work quite as much. But yeah, it, it's it, it it's a different mindset, I think, sometimes. Mm. But it's it's a challenge, and it's also really exciting when you find that perfect thing, and you're mm. kind of like, oh, you know, I, I need yeah. to use that. Or, you know. yeah, yeah, I agree. It leads you in a certain direction, doesn't it? It actually comes from the materials and often the starting point. That's what's the that sparks the the inspiration is actually what am I, yeah, what am I gonna do with this that I found, you know? It's not just your your normal canvas that you would put mm. on, on the wall is you you make it your own, don't you? You you find your own um 
I mean, I live in the city, um, so I'm I got available plenty of skips that I can look in. So <laughs> you know, you take uh, what what's around you, uh, and mm. and it can inspire you as to yeah. what to do. Yeah, I also want to say as well. There's a couple of things on my mind actually, um, and one is, you know, use using things that maybe. Like I think some people say, you know, about using acrylic and the fear of that now. And uh, and I think it's OK to still be using some things that are still controversial. It's not not to feel bad about that. Um, and, it, and I guess it's just going back to what we were saying at the beginning about just being mindful of just even implementing one thing to start with and, and just then moving through this process of even if it's just one thing a month or every six months even, it will make such a big difference. And it's yeah. just starting to notice um, what you're using. One of the questions mm. that I've seen coming in a lot is around archival quality if we start changing things. I'll ask everybody else their view that my view on this, I guess, is it depending on what you're using is to just research, research it because you're mm. not, it's not likely that you're the first person to try it. If you are, then you've kind of probably going to be a millionaire because you found something incredible that no one else has used yet. Um, so I would Google it and see what the people are using. Um, and, and whether that, material or that substrate has been used and tested before what what are your views Renelle should I start with you what, what's your views on archival that's quality and changing the things the problem we have is everything that is made today is lasting for so long and that's one of the problems that we're facing is that you know that blob of paint or that um you know bit of glue lasts a lot longer than any of us are here. <laughs> so I don't know if um, it really is a big issue. I think I'm a little bit different to these guys in that I use fairly traditional materials and mediums and surfaces. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I use canvas, I use boards, um, I don't yeah. um, use found objects, but um, I research the materials that I use really well and try to find the best possible um, ecological solutions. So ex my watercolour paper, um, I use a, the type that is not using animal-based um, um, glues. I use a vegan product for that. Um, and it's just about just putting a little bit more time into what you're choosing. And you're right, Michelle, there's probably somebody else using it. So, um, for example, PVA glue, you know that it's used in the building industry. You know that it's being used um, for building houses and things like that. So it's going to last a while. So um, yeah. it, it's it's not – I always had a, a, um, a friend of mine who's a, quite a, a, a big artist here and, and she said, you know what, archival problems are not your problem. They're – the museums in the future's problem. So, you know, you don't have to really stress about it that much. You just need to make sure that it's something solid that you can, you know, be positive about and it's not falling apart in your studio. But do some experiments and see, you know, how they go, do some research, find other artists that are doing similar, or not even artists, but other um, industries that are doing something with similar materials and see, you know, how they go together. But, um yeah, as I say, I, my problem is that so much is left for a long time now. So it's there's so many, um, you know, archival things that we don't want to be archival anymore. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, yeah, and sometimes as well, you can you can sell your work, um, you know, without the archival certification <laughs> um, because. I, this is what I did actually when when I created a collection once I, I just made it clear that you know I don't actually know how long this is going to last it's all new materials yeah. it's new things you know I'm, I'm pretty certain it's going to last at least 20 years and in fact this was a long time ago and I saw one of the paintings recently and it must be must be 10 years old now and it's still going <laughs> <laughs> um but the, you know people buy it they don't mind you know mm. so um, but and what's sometimes your view? the actual changing um, the work that changes, it gets more interesting as it as it changes. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. 
it's a bit yeah, ephemeral. in fact that's what happened with my work it's cha it's changed and it's different but it's and they're still pleased with it um mm. so yeah yeah you could um definitely sell it on that bravado melanie what about you with um what are your views is it something that crosses your mind or do you just go with the flow um I do what I can. I do have some pre-made canvases because um, I went out and got, bought a load. And <laughs> I think, yeah, I'm going to get on with that. I'm going to do that. And I still will do, of course. Um, but it's you, you've got to have a starting point, don't you? Um, and then make it your own. I also think that you can, yeah, if you've got a website, express other ways that you are conscious of what you do so um you know we we're fortunate we've got solar panels on our roof um when i use paint if i've got stuff left over i will put it in a little pot um i'll put a bit of damp tissue in there to i've uh, to keep it uh, moist so it doesn't skin over and, and then seal it with, um, you know, a uh, cling film over it. And then when I go back to it, I, I can still uh, still use it. So being able to do just little things like that, and if you mention that, uh, I think on your website, it shows that you are conscious about your actions and the yeah. impact that you're doing. I mean, yeah. and then you'll, you'll find, what else is it I'm doing? Um, um, and in general, so like with a Facebook, I'm with a Facebook, local Facebook group. So I've been having a clear out like most people during lockdown. I don't want something. Pass it on, see if anybody else uses it and vice versa. So yeah. things like that. And if it, it comes that you know materials that you can use to create art come your way uh, i have done um print making in the past so using floor lino it's mm -hmm. always been a, an asset you know i, I that's you know a, a plastic um uh product however it's been recycled and used to create something beautiful so mm -hmm. you you can't you have to you know pick your battles really you don't you can't yeah. do every aspect Everything. but mm -hmm. you do what's within your power and uh, capability yeah yeah um i'm just checking the comments here there was there was an interesting comment from rowena where's it gone let me just go back where is it here it goes. <laughs> I do wonder if people like Picasso worried about archival properties. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wouldn't it be amazing to have them on now? <laughs> um, there was a great tip here from David. The Frugal Crafter apparently has a blog um, and there's an item on that blog about salt water in watercolours. So it looks interesting. Not read it all, but that might be a good blog to go and check out as well. That sounds like a good one. The Frugal Crafter. Thank you. Um, archival problems in the future. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it. Uh, so Simone says, I reuse boxes by cutting them and turning them inside out. Ah, that way you don't have to print from the other company on the box exterior. Oh, mm. that's a great tip. Thank you, Simone. Cut it up, turn it round, turn it inside out. I like it. Let me just see. Um, someone was asking about an eco-friendly glue have, I've, have any of you on here found an eco-friendly glue? I certainly haven't. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I use PVA, I do use the washable PVA, but I can't say it's particularly Yeah, yeah. I, if I've used a pot um, to use PVA in, instead of it, uh, washing that pot out mm. down the sink, I leave it to dry and then peel the P the PVA that was on there dr dried off, peel it off, and it's like a film. And then mm. man, you might want to use that as well. Yeah, yeah I just re I just keep mine like again old you know cosmetic containers. I keep my PVA in that, so I just keep the lid on it and top it up and just keep reusing mm. that. So I don't yeah. have to wash anything away down the down the sink or anything. If mm -hmm. people have got 
uh, ideas now, let me know because there's some people messaging in. So Nikki says flour and water makes an extremely effective mm -hmm. glue. Um, Angela it says there's lots of cockroaches though. Pardon? Flour and, water. flour and water will attract cockroaches. That's the only oh. thing you've got to do. <laughs> <laughs> see, in the, in the UK, we don't have that problem. <laughs> it depends where you it's live. Yeah. <laughs> uh, lots of natural glues based on animal products and resins, yellow with age. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. That's a good tip. Thank you, Angela. It is an interesting conversation, isn't it? Rhonda says, yeah, it's so interesting. Just wish I'd live closer to the sea, but you have lots of rain. I take it you're in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me just see. Yeah, it attracts other bugs too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's a lot of people saying book binders, book binder glue for my books. Um, let me just check. Let me just go back. If you've got any tips, please do share. We will be gathering everything up and turning this into uh, an article as well. So, I found um, mount board really good to to work on too. Again, for for painting or collage. And if you go to a business that does framing, it's the you know it's the inner bit, isn't it? That they if they discard it, it's not it's not used, and you can often get it for free or for next to nothing so i've used yeah. that quite a lot and that's just we, again we know, probably need to come up with a list of to. we probably need to come up with a list of places to go and you know ask Sound for leftovers mm -hmm. like the builders for um big bits of cardboard too yeah what was that sorry renelle um framing shops they're really yeah. good for big bits of cardboard if you need to build a box they often have large um quite narrow boxes already that they get their stock in so they're usually quite happy to give them to you yeah that's great tip so edward says here i like to use backing board from used pads or even cardboard yeah like alfred yeah. wallace uh, but i prime it with combined gesso yeah yeah some people just like using found bits and bobs don't they mm. yeah it's what you could paint with as well yeah there's people that use tea bags and there is a really well-known artist and his name escapes me who uses coffee um and he you know his work is really really expensive and his medium is coffee <laughs> so <laughs> the wombles who remembers the wombles <laughs> i do <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh-oh, I, I feel a theme tune coming on. I'll just start to start singing. Let me go back. Uh, so, yeah, Susie was asking about the environmentally friendly glue. All oh, right, so you want it to use with jute cord and fabric. Okay, well, we'll see if anyone else has got tips mm -hmm. about that. Uh, Lottie says, I once worked on an eco project with an artist where we used the plastic rings that can that hold cans of beer, cable ties, and plastic bags. We dyed them, heat pressed them into fabrics. Wow. And attacked them mm. to a beautiful, colorful wall. Wow. It's incredible. Yeah, it's about that playtime, isn't it? And pushing things and materials around to see what you can do with them. Um, <laughs> I just says, I've come to the conclusion the United Arts Base is, is an alternative reality where anything is possible. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Lots of people talk about the bombles now. <laughs> um, Sophie says, thank you for that idea. Going to try uh, doing the material layers. And then there was also um, tips of, you know, when you're, you're doing the water, um, cleaning your, your brushes and things like that. You can use the old pair of knickers or pants or, <laughs> and, and use it as a sieve as well. Mm. Um, I use so old tea towels. Do you? Yeah. yeah. When tea yeah. towels are starting to get holes and things in them, they're great rags. Mm. Yeah. The, the, my, I'm conscious of what's going in the water system, you mm. know, when you're, you're cleaning your brushes and what have you. Um, I, I would use paper. And mm. then, you know, clean as much paint off my brush that way um, yeah. and throw the paper away. Um, having one of those little things that collects 
uh, you know, in the sink. So you, you know, those big blobs that Filthy. don't go down the drain. Yeah. And then they just pick up the uh, the the bits of paint as well, what what's left. Mm -hmm. So that can be gone in the bins, uh, mm -hmm. so it doesn't go in the water system. Yeah. So uh, that's yeah. what I'm conscious of doing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't like people putting turps and stuff like that down down the sink. Um, I know some recycle centres, they will take um, uh, products like that. Um, so you have to check uh, with if you because uh, I'm in uh, the UK. So um, they would mm. do that. You would check your local county council for uh, what pro uh, chemical products that they take and will yeah. recycle. No, yeah. I know because um, I'm in Cardiff. I know that they do take like old paint tin, uh, tins of paint, and they will use that paint uh, in government buildings. <laughs> <laughs> so they will recycle it themselves. So that's yeah, cool. yeah, that's so good. Um, I was just thinking as well about what other people have given tips on in the past when it comes to using acrylic paints, which can really dry out quickly. Mm. Um, there's one tip that I remember if you put some of the paper towel, the absorbent paper towel on a tray and then line it with tracing paper and then put your acrylic paint on top. This is from Nicholas Wilton, by the way. Um, that keeps the acrylic paint wet for a very, very, very long time. And then somebody mm. also, uh, when I shared this last time, somebody off the back of that said, and I don't know if I've got this right, but keeping it in the fridge I might have just made this that's up. That, I don't know. That's me. That's you, can, you can keep oil paint it, in the freezer. Is it oils? Yeah. Yes. Okay, oil so paint in the freezer. Yeah, so, yeah, I have a dinner plate that is my palette. And obviously <laughs> I don't use dinner anymore. Um, and I leave my paint on it. And I have like one of those silicon bowl covers that, you know, just come, pops off. And it goes on and then I just pop it in the freezer and the next time I have a painting session, I just take it out and leave it for an hour to defrost and then pull off the silicon and it's ready to go. So it can last days and days and days, you know, and, um, yeah. That's amazing. Hmm. Yeah. I've, 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 had the... a, I've had, an, a, you know, a, a pot of paint in the, in the fridge just as long as it's got... Um, you know, something to keep it moist so yeah. it doesn't feel more hardened. Like, mm -hmm. you know, even if it's a, a bit of sponge, a bit of cloth that's damp, yeah, um, mm -hmm. and then seal it in some way, even if you use an old, um, an old takeaway tub with mm -hmm. a lid on it, um, mm -hmm. just so that there's, there's moisture trapped in there, um, so mm -hmm. it doesn't mm -hmm. uh, seal over. So, yeah, I, I, I did it probably about six weeks ago. I left it, I left it in the shelf on the on the door of the fridge, and then so oh yeah, I've got some leftover. I need something to prime. I'll use that. Got it out. No film. Great. Went and used the rest. Of that I was quite impressed mm. with that. Mm. Mm. I thought you were going to say one of the family members went. I'm really <laughs> happy. Pots are taking up. <laughs> Age. <laughs> yeah, just let, oh, this oh, is no, it's not yogurt, son. It's not yogurt. <laughs> I was just thinking we should probably uh, yeah label everything if you share <laughs> if you share a fridge with others. <laughs> <laughs> Especially but on that, you've also got to you've got to think about how much you're putting out. So just don't put as many, uh, don't put as much paint out to start with. Mm -hmm. You can always put more out, yeah. um, but just be frugal in the way that you're actually applying. Mm. Um, that paint to your palette and, and think about, you know, where you're going to put it if it's, you know, some people just have a, 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 um, a canvas ready and they just use up the leftover paint as a, a background for the next painting mm. or um, that sort of thing. So it, it, it just depends on the type of work you do. But, um, mm. yeah, it, it's just think ahead is the, the main thing. Don't jump in and, and not think about where you're going to put your your waste because that's the thing yeah. that, that is the main key message is don't put it down the drain, don't mm. throw it in the bin, don't get rid of it at all if you can. Yeah, yeah. 
And then there's some tips here coming in from ones from Nikki that I've just found some biodegradable disposable gloves, which are great if you paint as messily as me. Great tip. We've got to gather all this up, haven't we, and put mm. it in a, in a document. It's amazing. This is great. Isabel sent this in. Went to a craft fair yesterday, and a lady was selling natural beauty products, but I was mostly intrigued by a box that she was using as packaging for a product assortment. She said it was made of mushroom root store, uh, stokes and 100% compostable. Wow. Mm. <laughs> this is it. There's so many different things now that people have been um creating yeah, let me just people see. are very conscious aren't they especially mm -hmm. with the cop um 26 it's yeah. what's 26 i think yeah. uh they've just been on for us to just mention on our websites you know that we are conscious that we'd like to be sustainable uh, and what we're doing um yeah then that yeah. may you know help obviously encourage and inspire Mm -hmm. um other artists and and those who want to actually be conscious about their purchases as mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. um that can encourage yeah and that would be, it'd be really good to share i think yeah resources isn't it where can they get you know that yeah those compostable boxes from mm -hmm. i mean I, I put my my images onto products and i'm quite conscious of i need to find you know supplies so for mm -hmm. example tea towels you know where can i get it printed onto you know something that's organic or more sustainable than you know that's something that's, that's coming from China. Yeah. Or something. So you know it's it's all those things. That's a resource, shared resource, I think, would, would be fantastic. Really. Yeah, um, Helen's got a good tip here, just saying about um, reusing things. So just be still mindful of making sure things get there in in one piece because. Um, so something was ordered, it was delivered in a cat food box, but it did get damaged. So yeah, it, it's it's like, don't take it to the extreme of the it's detriment the of, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you still need to pad it out with stuff, don't you? Um, so Simone says, I collect my excess cut off threads in a jar and then use that thread when I bead or repair stuff. Oh, lovely. Yeah, because thread is expensive. Absolutely. Um, Nicola says, yeah, there are some now eco versions of acrylic paint in the US and USA, finally. Natural earth paint. That sounds yummy. Um, Caroline was on a stall next to a lady who was promoting recycling by selling homes stamped with water-based paint, brown Christmas paper. paper. Ah, yeah, and someone else here was saying about making your own paper as well, which, mm -hmm. yeah, we've had a few people uh, creating their own paper as well, which can be good fun. So Julie was asking what type of adhesive, was it, was it PVA, wasn't it? It is PVA, yes, yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I do now put everything behind glass. I, I didn't use to, actually, but again, we are talking about the archival quality, Um so I've had to sort of feel like, no, I, I need to do that really. You know, if I'm selling work to somebody then I, in the past, I, I felt I didn't want to be bringing glass as another, <laughs> another material, but I, I, it's like, it's like you say, you're weighing up really, aren't you? What, yeah. Yeah. Do, you can't I need do to, everything. Know, make sure it's protected. So, you know, the PVA is fine for, I mean, for old fabrics and I use yeah, it for yeah. buttons and things still then um, need to mount it behind glass to make sure it's, it's protected. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Edward says another thing about um, disposing dried acrylic on your palette is under hot soapy water, the paint tends to just roll off cleanly in your hands. Yeah, yeah. That's the other good thing about lining it with tracing paper as well, because then you can just chuck the tracing paper away rather than have to wash the tray. Um, Alaria is an eco artist too. Hello, Alaria. I was thinking, apart from doing what we do, recycling and upcycling, shall we have an area? Yes, uh, absolutely. Yes, we are going to work on that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it, then it's just choosing one thing because it can get really overwhelming, can't it, with all the different things. And it's just so from this session, it's like just choose one, one thing. Um, Deborah's asking about the, the fastness. Um, the CESA archival. Yeah, it, it, I have no idea. So it's one of those things that you, you need to research and have a look to see if the people have tested this out already. Um, yeah. I'm also, 
I'm also contemplating um, making reproductive prints, but you know, I don't want to. Uh, I'm looking into um, print on demand, so I don't have the expense of printing out a whole load of prints and then mm, not selling them, but uh, yeah. being able to be cost effective and and not wasting that way. So um, yeah, yeah, I've been it, looking into that. I mean, you probably have definitely have to test out um, the product with who you decide um, mm. to order from, and then as and where uh, who will do print on demand, and mm. then you can sell, you know, when people want it rather than just um, a waste of print yeah. that you've printed and, and nobody wants to buy. So you know, to test them out. Mm. Yeah. It's a good point. Just order it when you need it. Yeah. Um, Janice is asking, where did you get the intentionally recycled stamp from, Renell? Oh, I got it made. Um, I have um, a company called Enviroprint Australia, and they do a lot of printing of lots of different things. So that's who I use. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, but I know that um, companies like Vista Print and those kind of guys, that you know, anyone who makes stamps, basically, you can get them to make them. Yeah. Could you do it as a lino? Could you make? I suppose you could make your own like a little lino print. Obviously, you have to do it. You'd have to <laughs> write it backwards, <laughs> print it the right way around. Yes. <laughs> yeah. that before. <laughs> um, but, but, there you go. <laughs> there you go okay that's lovely it's a nice yeah. way of doing it isn't it yeah it is a nice way of doing it because i received something this week in a really weird box and i was like what yeah. <laughs> it really confused me <laughs> but then the weird thing is then it was in another box so it was like there was no need to put it in two boxes yeah <laughs> but <laughs> um thank you right okay this was really really interesting and i think we'll gather up we're going to gather up all the advice and create a resource at some point so this was really helpful i think just just choose one one thing even if it's a small thing start there and even if it's just being conscious of what you're pouring down the drain like melanie said or yeah. just using you know before you put something in the bin can it be reused or passed mm. on to somebody else as well that's what I've started to do before I put things in the bin now you know I if I don't want it I think is there somebody else that could use this and um, and I do love the idea of going locally to find people as well that are maybe throwing things out that you could reuse so mm. there's some of the tips that I've taken away that I've written down uh, and, and the we collecting... have a big, um, community here who are all artists, so you never know who who might be able to use that, you know, those old pencils or that, um, mm. yeah. you know, that yeah. bit of fabric or whatever. Yeah. So good. Thank you for everyone tuning in. I've just got a couple of announcements before we go. So it is Your Art Matters Week. We are live every day this week, sharing inspiration and live tomorrow and on Wednesday at the same time. Um, and um, we have a competition running at the moment as well. We have three podcast episodes. If you listen and share on your social media, you're in with a chance of winning a prize to be featured in our magazine. And I've got the prize winners so far on my screen here. So I'm just going to read them out and we will contact you all. Uh, the first one is Emily Powell. You will be featured in our magazine. Another one, which is a complete fluke. I didn't choose these winners, by the way. It was Katie and our team. Karis. Yes. <laughs> you, yeah. I just found out just before I came on. I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I just found out now. So you probably found out before I did. Uh, so congratulations, Karis. Thank uh, you. Uh, uh, James Lee. James Lee is another winner. So you could be featured in our magazine. Sonia Orton. Sonia, you are a winner too. And Chris Gonzalez Aiden who also won so the competition is still going ahead so you'll all be featured in our magazine um so thank you so much for listening to the podcast and sharing it it really does make a massive difference so we really appreciate all your support everybody and of course we have the art challenge running as well so if you want to see what today's challenge is just go to our facebook page or our instagram 
and uh, you can go to the yourartmatters.com event to find all the information about all the challenges, all the replays to the videos and the details of how you can enter the competition as well. So thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining. Thank you so much for our guests to take the time to join us out of your busy schedules. Ronell's going to go to bed now. <laughs> <laughs> it's very late for Ronell. Um, so yes, thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Karis, Ronell, and Melanie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.